welcome back to my channel. My name is Tina and today we're going to do a get ready with me um, on Lizzie Borden. I had asked about doing this on my channel a few days ago and a lot of people said that they would be interested in this. So that's what we're going to do. But today's is going to be on Lizzie Borden and she's not technically a serial killer. If she killed anyone, she only killed two people and that would be her father and her stepmother, Andrew Borden and Abby Borden. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting case. Most people know the nursery rhyme and stuff like that, but they don't really know the case itself. And um, there's been a lot about this on TV lately. Like there's an entire now new show all about Lizzie Borden. And it struck me that <laughs> it's really not very fair. I've actually went back through and re-familiarized myself with this case because I thought you would see, maybe, considering people are coming back to this and actually reinvestigating it a little, you'd see some more of the facts that were, at the time, the reason that she was found not guilty. It amazes me how many people know, don't know, that she was not found guilty at all. It only took them 90 minutes, actually, to decide she wasn't guilty. Now, at this time, um, there was a lot of prejudice and women were considered the fair, weaker sex. So there is some thought that that played into it. But they were hanging women long before this. It wasn't that far before this. They burned women at the stake. So I don't really think they had a problem killing women. And they certainly did find women guilty all the time. So I think this nonsense of, well, they just didn't find her guilty because she was a woman, is kind of, is bullshit. So what happened was, according to newspaper reports at the time, and there is a lot of information about this case that's went missing over the years and stuff because it is old. I mean, this was in the 1800s, so it is an older case. Forensics was just being started, fingerprints were in its infancy, and even though they were doing these things, they did not do them at this trial, which took place in Massachusetts. Which again, you know, it's an area of the world not known for being kind to women, just because they're women. So I don't really buy this whole thing of, well, she was found not guilty because she was a woman. The other thing is, if you go and actually read the newspapers at the time, you would see that she was drugged immediately. So she's in the house, she comes upon her father who's been brutally, brutally murdered. Not just a little bit murdered, like, you know, we're talking full on blood everywhere, but not a speck, not a drop on her. Not a single drop was found on her. Well, actually one drop was found on her, but it was so small that the only forensic science they had at the time dismissed it as just being completely impossible that it had come from this murder scene because this murder scene was literally just swamped in blood. Um, it was everywhere. By all uh, references and everything, the cast-offs, and it's too bad that, you know, we didn't have better pictures and stuff at the time because you actually could get a good idea of how tall the person was who committed this murder nowadays just uh, based on that cast off. And by all accounts, it was everywhere, but not on her. There were only two people in the house that day, Lizzie and the maid, um, Bridget Sullivan, that everybody called Maggie. A lot of people have, think that it had to have been one of them too, but that's not true. Um, at that time, things were a lot different than they are now. While they couldn't have come in through the front door because it had like three locks on it, it was all firmly locked, they could have come in through the back door. And they were so disliked that they were suffering from food poisoning and the stepmother thought that they were being poisoned. Um, the Bordens were one of the wealthiest families in the area. Andrew was a mean son of a bitch and didn't even put out money for indoor plumbing and things that were available at the time. So he was, you know, a miserly person. Lizzie was older. She was in her 30s. So she was a spinster at that time, which automatically right there, I don't see that 
they would have given her any um, leeway, that jury. I, I just don't because they didn't like spinster women, especially wealthy ones, and she was. There's just a lot about this case that I just don't really buy into. But he was found in the main, like in a parlor area that would have been very easy or difficult to, you know, hide his body where the mother, stepmother was found upstairs in a bedroom on the floor, like behind a bed. Okay, so how did she go about doing this if she did this? Because people actually had seen her that day. Um, they'd seen her out and about the main because I don't her, see, people had seen the main given the time frames that they're windows, talking about. It would have been um, pretty hard for her. The mother to was probably disappear, I think, long, long enough to do the damage. Ninety that was minutes or so before it's the hard father. work. She was cold, putting fifteen not. blows into somebody. We don't know for sure that they were actually done by hatchet. That's what they said, but. It was never proven, and the forensic at the time said that the hatchets they took to court were not the hatchet or item used, weapon used, to murder them. So the, the evidence against her was that she was the only person in the house who could have done the murder. She was seen burning a dress um, that she could have worn for the murder, although there were witnesses. <laughs> that her time frame didn't make sense. Well, there's problems with... All of those, which the defense did a heck of a job pointing out. They didn't really end up calling much of a case to defend her. What they said was she didn't hide the fact that she was destroying this dress. She said it was paint spattered. And people who were there that day and watched her burn this dress said it didn't have any blood on it. Sure, they could have lied, I suppose, but it was her sister and these were her parents also. So why would she lie about that? You could say she did, I'm sure, but that one doesn't make a lot of sense. The other thing that is true is that she had a lot of family who wanted that property and they easily could have killed his, her parents to inherit because women didn't inherit easily at that time, especially by casting this on her, they could have easily inherited that fortune. And then there was this other mysterious stranger that everybody, like four people saw and people gave like incredibly detailed accounts of what happened with this guy. And they said that he was pale and scary and one person, he like asked for a ride and the wife, when she caught sight of him, even though they paid him a dollar to take him to this next town over, she was like, oh, hell no. Made her husband give the money back um, and sent him on his way. And that guy was never found. Um, once they decided that Lizzie was guilty, um, and this was really tried in the newspapers at the time. Once they decided that she was guilty, it was, the police went with it. And the other thing that happened was, so she's in there. She sees her father. She starts screaming. She's screams for the maid to go get the doctor who lives across the street. The doctor wasn't there initially. Neighbor comes over. She's obviously in great distress. So what do they do at that time? Um, once they do get the doctor there within minutes, and he was there before the police were there, they shot her for all the morphine. They had her so doped up on morphine throughout the entire trial. It's amazing she remembered her own damn name. The entire trial, when you read it and you when you get more information about it, it's just like, oh my god. The supposed hatchet they found when they took it to court, a forensic scientist said it wasn't even blood on it. It was, in fact, rust. And this was supposedly the um, weapon that she had hidden. They made a lot of it out of the fact that at one point she said she was in the barn looking for stuff for 20 minutes and she sort of changed what she was looking for. One minute she was looking for lead, the next one she's looking for fishing tackle. Um, they made a lot to do about those things. Now, how much of that 
was really important, I don't know. It just seems like she was kind of, they have, couldn't figure out who had done this. And so they looked around and they're like, oh, spinster lady. Um, she was here, let's put it on her. There just wasn't any evidence. I personally don't see how she could have done it. One, she would have been soaked in blood. I mean, the crime scene descriptions from everyone and the pictures show blood spatter just every dang place. So I don't see how she could have done it and then got redressed in the time frame. Um, and we are talking, it was, at the most she had was like 13 minutes, I think they said. So she would have had to have killed her father, killed her mother earlier in the day, then killed her father, then managed to completely clean herself up after killing him, gotten every trace of blood off of her, and then freaked out and screamed and called people. The thing is, people today can't manage that. Um, and we aren't wearing the complicated clothing of the 1800s. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen their clothes, but I don't know how long it took them. I'm guessing it would have taken her by herself at least five minutes to get undressed, out of bloody clothing, not to mention completely cleaned up, like not have any blood in your hair, in your skin, um, on under your nails. Blood is really hard to get up, and I'm not even talking just like the DNA blood that nowadays, you know, we know about that's microscopic and everything. I'm talking just cleaned up so that you didn't look like you murdered somebody. Trust me, it's not easy. It's gonna take time. I don't see how you could do it in that time. I just don't see how you could accomplish it that quickly and then be standing there freaking out in the right mindset. And by all accounts, she was completely distraught. Completely distraught during the trial, completely drugged out and out of her mind the entire time. Especially when they brought her parents decapitated heads with all the flesh removed into court and set them on a table. The things they did back then that they can't do now, thank God, is like huge. I don't know, this is one of those few times when I'm gonna say, I don't think she did it. I don't think she did it based on the evidence at the time, the jury decision, I think the reason people give for her not being found guilty are just silly. We've never had a problem persecuting women um, or finding them guilty and hanging them in this country at any time. <laughs> if you look at that time, I guarantee you're gonna find other trials where women were found guilty and hung. People did think women were less likely to do things, but when we did, we were much more vilified. So that's my whole thing on Lizzie Borden and her trial. I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know if you want to continue watching these. I find them interesting to do. I do a lot of reading on these case files and reading back through the really old newspapers is fascinating. If you've never done that, I'll have links because uh, it's really interesting. And yeah, go take a look for yourself and tell me what you think. Do you think she did it? Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys so we can talk about this. I'll talk to you later. Bye!